Hi, my name is Ruben Watkins, founder of, uh, and, of Dovu and CEO of Dovu. Um, I'm going to give you a little sort of overview of what, uh, of what Dovu is, just to sort of get my credentials out there. And then I'm going to go into some use cases around how blockchain has been used in the automotive space, uh, some of the pilots that we're working on, and, uh, and sort of go into as much detail as I'm allowed to under some of the NDAs that we've got and then just explore things a, a, a little further, really. Um, so Dovu, I founded Dovu about sort of 18 months ago. Um, Dovu really is the token. We, we set it up to be the token for the mobility sort of uh, space, a token that you can earn and a token that you can spend. Uh, and you can earn it by doing activity and you can earn it by doing things that are beneficial in that in the mobility space and then spend it wherever wherever you want to in the uh, in the ecosystem so I pitched this idea to Jaguar Land Rover through their uh, venture capital arm in motion ventures and they uh, they said I, I, yeah sounds great um, here's some here's some cash um, you know take it to the next to the next stage so we started to develop uh, this proposition with uh, seed investment from uh, Jaguar Land Rover. And, um, and then what we did is went out into the marketplace and did a token sale in October of last year, uh, which in itself is an interesting experience when you have a strategic sort of corporate uh, investor on board that owns equity in your business to go out and do a token sale. And I'm sort of happy to talk to anybody about that if anybody's interested. The, um, we did uh, a very small token sale in a very small window of sort of six weeks or so uh, last year in October. And, um, and then we went out and, uh, and continued our, our, our sort of business development. Um, People contribute to the future of their cities and actions. Smart cities needs smart citizens. Gamify mobility and accelerate innovation. Say hello to Dovu. A token you earn and spend by sharing and changing the way you travel. Whether you're working on connected cars, public transport, or autonomous vehicles, the Dove token facilitates a new transfer of value. Transactions are secure and reliable even when you don't know each other. Smart contracts define the agreement between individuals and connected things to share and transact in a transparent and controllable way. Tokenized incentivization will power future business models. Join the movement. So, a little video, uh, very basic um, for this sort of room where you sort of you know, get to understand blockchain and, 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 and how it works. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that's been fascinating to us as, we, as we've gone through this sort of process is the appetite from the automotive sector in embracing blockchain, not just for the business model that Dovu has, which is uh, a wallet where you earn and, uh, and spend tokens for doing activities, but across the supply chain and a whole plethora of other areas. As I say, I'll go into some sort of use cases in a minute. Um, there was an initiative that was launched two days ago over in Dubai called Mobi, the Mobility Open Blockchain Initiative. Uh, and 70% of the automotive sort of industry signed up to that, including some of the software companies like IBM and others. And we're one of the founding partners of that, uh, of that initiative. Uh, I think there were 30 uh, that, it, that, that launched with, including sort of IOTA, uh, sort of Dovu, and uh, you know, IBM, as well as the usual suspects in the automotive sector, you know, BMW, uh, et cetera, um, Renault as well. So um, we're very proud to be part of that initiative, and we're going to see that sort of develop as we work in a very open and collaborative way to create some standards across the automotive sector, not just, as I say, for supply chain, where there's some great work being done in terms of looking at all the different elements of um, you know, components as they come into a factory, you know, ledgering when they come in, ledgering when they leave, you know, through to, you know, using blockchain to do some authentication and to uh, manage some of the security that's sort of going on within the, uh, within the sort of cars, cars itself. But actually, when you take a look at mobility, it isn't just about that car, of course, it's not just about the hardware, it's about a much wider ecosystem. Uh, as these automotive sort of OEMs, big car companies move, 
uh, and invest across other, um, you know, sort of uh, mobility services such as, uh, you know, hourly car hires, uh, public transport, you know, bikes, a whole range of things that these car companies are getting involved in right now. They see that actually they need to play in the space of mobility, not just building cars, and create a sort of an ecosystem. Um, and what it is that the, the and we, why mobility plays an important part in the, in the sort of blockchain is that it releases certain types of behavior or it encourages certain types of behavior. So when you're able to remove fiat uh, from an equation, when you're able to apply smart contracts and when you're able to ledger stuff on the chain, what you can do is start to look at, um, one, encouraging certain types of, of behavior, making sure that it's a trusted interaction between the driver and the, uh, and the car companies, um, and also just nudge people. You know, and this is really where, where I think blockchain and uh, tokens and the tokenization of behavior starts to sort of, uh, you know, be, you know, resonate with the companies that we're dealing with. Um, because it's one thing to have a technology such as an electric vehicle and a battery. There's another thing in terms of educating the driver how to charge that electric vehicle correctly to make sure that the range of that vehicle is as maximum uh, that, that, it, that it could be. Um, and also to encourage the driver to you know, um, sell some of that charge potentially back to the grid and also encourage the driver to charge in certain areas of the city where the, where the supply um, is optimum at that moment in time. So how do you do that? How do you nudge people to do sort of behaviors that they don't normally do? And I think by adding tokens, gamification, blockchain as a ledger, you can start to move and, and, in, and encourage sort of behaviors. Uh, so what are we uh, working on? You know, some of the blockchain initiatives that, that, that we're working on right now, and again, just to put some context into where Dovu is, we're working with about 70% of the, uh, of the vehicle, uh, global vehicle companies right now, uh, manufacturers, and working on pilots. This whole space really is in the pilot phase. If anybody claims that they're actually going out to market on a huge scalable sort of solution, I wouldn't sort of believe them right now. It's really about piloting. It's piloting the technology, but more importantly, really, as well as piloting the token economics, it's piloting how that whole thing works and whether or not you can use tokens to nudge sort of behavior and reward behavior in a, in a, in, in a, in a particular way. So how do you, in, you know, how do you incentivize in the, auto, you know, in, in, the, in the sort of automotive industry? First of all, you've got to divide a, divide a line between what is um, car data and what is, uh, and what is you know, consumer or driver data. You know, so uh, who owns what and, uh, and where. So the, um, that's a whole different discussion, and that's really not for the blockchain. That'll keep lawyers happy for years to come, I'm sure. And GDPR uh, will, uh, will only sort of go to, um, to sort of muddy the waters or help, depending on what side of the argument you are. But what you can do with, uh, with blockchain is, you know, one, reward data sharing. Number two, be open about who you're sharing that data with. And number three, store on the chain, you know, the fact that that data has been shared with, uh, with, with, with sort of different people. So it's important when you look at the car as a platform, not just as a car, that actually they have all of these uh, things in place, that they're, ena that they're, they're enabling that. So we're working on sort of areas, uh, areas around that. The other element is, you know, if you're going to be a good citizen and, um, you know, maybe you want to drive less. Maybe actually you want to take advantage of all the different mobility services that are out there. So we're all creatures of habit. Um, well, I'd say we're all, but most of us are creatures of habit. We sort of tend to take the same journey to work. We tend to take the same journey to familiar places. It's the same route. Um, normally on the same mode of transport. And as we drive past, you know, uh, you know people using, um, you know, uh, uh, a cycle hire by the hour, we go, oh, that's interesting, that's great. Maybe next time I'll, I'll, I'll have a go at that. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is to nudge people to use the different um, a myriad of, uh, of mobility services that are, that are out there. And that's linked to smart cities, it's linked to the automotive, 
sector. It's linked to a whole range of, uh, of different sort of uh, um, stakeholders that we, that we work with in this sort of sector. But it's, it's really about creating the, the, the encouraging people to do the, the, um, something that they wouldn't have done before. Uh, and you need to apply nudge economics, you need to apply tokenization and um, gamification. Now, if you're all doing any buzzword bingo, you could have won a, a big prize there. But it's, if you wrap all those things up, um, these things actually do work. Because do you know what? It's nothing new. You know, it's nothing new. It's just wrapped up and applied in a sort of a, in a in a in a different area. The um, and of course, you know, if you're going to reward tokens, then uh, and you create uh, um, loyalty. You know, um, one of the things that we're working with, certainly with the airline industry, is how do you create a new sort of Avios points? How do you create a new airline sort of uh, incentive sort of scheme? Um, because, you know, if you can charge your car, get rewarded for charging it in the right way, and then use those tokens within an airline, you know, for travel or use it to hire a bike or, uh, or anything else, suddenly this, these loyalty token schemes become pretty useful across the mobility sort of spectrum. Big one, this is that we're working with multiple uh, vendors on is this electric vehicle charging. What you've got in the automotive sector really is how we buy cars has changed dramatically over the last number of years. So we tend to lease them. So therefore, somebody else owns them and we rent them or lease them. One of the big challenges for the car companies is what's the value of a three year old electric vehicle? Um, how do they put that on their balance sheet as a, as a sort of value? Well, a lot of it's going to depend on the battery. A lot of it's going to be, be depend on how you use the battery. So anything that nudges people to use that battery in an optimum way will have a benefit, not just for the uh, owner of the car, uh, which may be the car company themselves, but also for you as the driver and the consumer, because you'll feel more comfortable about the range that that, that car can deliver. Um, so. Again, when you're entering a new era where you're introducing new technologies, you have to remember the human aspect of it. And the human aspect of it needs sometimes a little bit of a nudge. You know, you can't just hit them with a stick. Uh, you have to sort of encourage and uh, cajole certain types of behavior. And, uh, and that's really the area that we're, that we're sort of focused in. The same with infrastructure integration. So we're looking at sort of blockchain on car parks, blockchain into um, parking meters, blockchain and tokens when it comes to, um, you know, paying for uh, toll roads and so on. Um, embedding a token within a dashboard of a car and uh, enabling that token to be used as a method of payment. Uh, without you having to leave the car are all things that um, seem obvious and, uh, and they're obviously been worked on and they're some of the pilots uh, that, that we're working on. Some of the things which are a bit more out there that we've got a um, sort of an R&D team working on are, are around the autonomous fleet payments and autonomous. What I mean by that is like, if there's no driver, how do you overtake somebody? You know, how do you sort of get to your appointment on time, and how do you make that, those negotiations with a fleet of autonomous vehicles that are all around you? So there has to be a negotiation, um, and there has to be a method of payment, uh, whatever that payment is, or exchange of value. So, you know, I may say, look, I want for the next, for the next 10 minutes, I want to overtake all of the cars in front of me, because I really need to get somewhere. There has to, as I say, the, the, the process of doing that, using, uh, tokens uh, and linking it to other sort of elements um, are things that we're experimenting with right now and all of it sort of ledgered on the blockchain because one of the things that the blockchain will do let's say I've negotiated with the first 10 cars that I see and they've all said yep you can overtake me that's fantastic so I'm bombing along and then sort of the fourth car just pops out in front of me where we have an accident you know great to have a ledger there somewhere where it's been agreed, time stamped, that actually we, all of those cars did actually agree that I could overtake them. So uh, there's no sort of argument that uh, that, that would have or, or, or wouldn't happen. Um, 
We've talked sort of a little bit about this. This is sort of an area that we're not, you know, as a company involved in, but these are the areas that, uh, that certainly form part of this, uh, this um, consortium that we're working with and some of the partner companies that we deal with. So security on sharing, you know, personal assets, uh, you know, owning your own sort of, uh, you know, digital footprint. Um, all of those things are going to be pretty key. Uh, and uh, again, blockchain can, is going to play a really important part of that. And that's going to be an important part of the value proposition of the, uh, of the car companies as well. Um, Taylor and the services around, um, around basically, you know, owning or understanding that all the VIN, the VIN number is the vehicle identification number. So one of the statistics and forgive me, I'm not a big fan of using statistics because they're normally wrong. Something like 25% of vehicles that are out there, the history of those second-hand vehicles uh, are not accurate. In other words, people say it's never been in an accident. They said that they're using the parts from a, from a verified supplier, but they're not. They're buying it online somewhere and uh, from an unknown source. So actually, the, all the components within that vehicle, um, a lot of them you just don't know uh, where they come from and, uh, and the quality of them. So by able to um, having a register of all of the components of every sort of vehicle, uh, and every time one of those components is changed, it's ledgered. And then uh, if you want to buy a second-hand car, you can just take a look at that register, and then you can sort of identify all the different elements on it. Um, I think that's going to become more and more interesting, um, and certainly an area that, uh, that's been invested in uh, and, um, pretty, pretty heavily. Um, and all that sort of ties in with the insurance industry, of course. So, you know, would you get a better premium if your vehicle had all of its elements registered on the chain and you knew the whole history of it? Would that benefit the, 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 you in terms of a, an insurance payment? Um, but moving ahead, it's the, it's the ability of blockchain as well to look at, from the insurance industry, to look at instant claim you know, uh, validations. And um, again, that's not our business as Dovu, but that's an area that, uh, that's sort of pulled into the whole sort of blockchain ecosystem. The, um, excuse the sort of uh, Dovu-centric sort of slide here, really, but this is what's driving and excuse the pun as well. This is what's driving the, um, the, the you know, our uh, engagement and involvement in the sort of industry. The smart contracts are fascinating. Um, mostly they're not very smart. Um, and the definition of whether they're a contract or not can sometimes be left open to interpretation. You know, but what they do do is move an argument around where you, it's very easy to do a simple if this then that uh, sort of transaction, when the, which is perfect for sort of tokens. One of the big challenges, of course, is that when we scale this out, so um, how do you scale this out on a public chain? Uh, can you scale it out on a, on, a, on, a, on a public chain? Well, what we do, where we, where we are with our development is that we've created our wallet, Adobe Wallet. That wallet sits in the, uh, in the App Store, well, under our enterprise account and is distributed right now to BMW. BMW are the first uh, client that we've been working with on this. So a, a BMW branded uh, wallet. Um, we look at productizing this experience. In other words, a BMW driver doesn't need to download a private key, doesn't need to sort of manage all of that. So the wallet is, uh, if you're familiar with Coinbase, it's very sort of familiar to that. So you enter your username, enter your password, own your wallet. Um, and then what we do is deliver, based on a series of smart contracts, we deliver tokens into that wallet um, based on certain types of behavior that are set by BMW, and the value of that behavior is set, is set by BMW in this smart contract, and then it's delivered. The only way we can do that on scale is a mixture of side chain and public chain. And those are the things that we are spending a lot of time on. So, for blockchain to be fully embraced by the automotive industry on a consumer level, on a driver level, you need to productize it. You need to remove these sort of blocks. You don't need to be a crypto sort of fan. 
uh, own your private key. You, you can, but you don't need to. It, it's going to spoil the adoption. Um, you need to start looking at productizing it, which, as I say, we, we, that, that's sort of what we focus on. Nobody really cares. My brother, who, who, who doesn't care about crypto or blockchain, drives a car. He'd love to sort of earn some rewards and tokens and sort of involve himself with all of this, but doesn't want to download a private key or worry about all that sort of nonsense. Um, the, the, whether it's a side chain, whether it's a public chain, no one cares. Nobody cares. Some of us in this room might, you know, and, uh, but actually in terms of scale, nobody cares. Um, certainly our clients don't care. The, the other side of it is knowing when to use blockchain and when not to use blockchain. Um, we're a blockchain company, you know, we've raised money, we've got our own, own token. Um, but you can't deliver uh, a, a fully grown product right now to the market if everything is on chain. And, 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 and I think one of the challenges or interesting things that I've discovered as I've gone around and started building this company and looking at my peer group is that too much of it is thought to, too much of this stuff is built on the chain when it's just not needed to be. So, you know, I think that the key message really is the, uh, the fact that, look, judging by the activity that we did, um, of the Mobi uh, launch two days ago, blockchain now is treated and being taken very seriously by you know most of the car companies in the world. They're plowing investment into it. Um, they're opening up collaboration. And this is the interesting part as well. If you, take, if you thought about the car industry a number of years ago, the idea that they would all be op working together on an open mobility, sort of, uh, sorry, mobility open blockchain initiative, it's sort of an oxymoron to most of the behaviors of car companies, which tend to be very closed, guarded, and protected. So blockchain's encouraging sort of a more open environment. It's uh, encouraging companies like us to come in and, uh, and work with these large sort of uh, organizations. And they're doing that because they understand that blockchain can change and transform a lot of their business practices. And actually, to encourage people to use the different plethora of mobility services are out there, you know, it's, uh, it's a key component of that. Um, I think that's enough for me. Um, so I'm going to be up there, I think, later at one of those tables chatting about um, the business side of what we've done in terms of raising the, 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 the seed money, we're doing the token sale, building our pipeline, working with the largest sort of car companies in the world. How have we done that? In a, in a, and I'm very happy to, to share that. Um, there's no magic to it, really. So the, uh, uh, and thank you very much.